Hi, welcome to Truth with Tal and Isaac. I'm Tal. I'm Isaac. Episode number 123 coming at you tonight. We're going to mix things up a little bit and we're going to do movie rewatchables first, Super Bowl recap second, and NBA trade deadline chatter third. So listen accordingly. We'll have timestamps for you. Jump around, leave whenever, come in whenever. Just, you know, open door policy. Once football finishes, it's a bit of an odd time. So we're just going to try a couple of different things strategically. Yeah. Off the top, Red Wings, they're a fun team to watch. We were fortunate enough to go see a game on Saturday. They got some building blocks. Debrinkit, Larkin, Sider, Lucas Raymond. They got some guys. Yes, they have lots of guys. Wild card, go Wings. Go Wings. Pitchers and catchers report. Tigers, you're sucking me in. I know you're sucking him in too. Like we're just starting to get excited. Good young guys. The like people seem to like their farm system. Listen, I still think they're going to lose a whole bunch of games this year, and it's going to be cheap for us to get tickets. But there will be some competitive games late August, early September, which is what we want. Then next year, 2025. Okay, enough Tigers. No one cares about the Tigers. Good people do. I care a lot. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the year. I'm just at the point where football's done. Basketball, I'm still really into, but it's like, I need a second sport, and that's baseball. So we, I would think, are master hype men, fans, trash talkers. One of Isaac's kind of key lines when he's yelling at opposing players, teammates, I don't, referees, okay. you're war criminals. So it's possible that one of our guys, Beef Stew, Isaiah Stewart from the Detroit Pistons, is a criminal. Okay, I throw around convict and prison and, and those types of words when I'm angry at people or trash talking. I would never use it with Isaiah Stewart. He is Detroit loyalty and He's I will Detroit support loyalty, him. But, but he did get charged with a crime last night in Phoenix. <laughs> like a literal crime. He went to prison. Um, we don't know a lot of details and it's amazing that the internet, you know, 22 hours later hasn't told us much information. Um Drew Eubanks, who's a backup big for Phoenix, and Isaiah Stewart, backup big for the Pistons, somehow got face-to-face, were yelling at each other, and I guess Beef Stew just hauled off and clocked him. That's what it sounds like. We don't know. We haven't seen it, but that's what it sounds like. Internet, find out some stuff. And any of our fans, if they find out um, some inside scoop, please let us know. Sure. Yeah, let us know. Like, I'm going to find it and send it to you, and you're going to be like, wow, that's awesome. I heard hair was related to it. You have to see that comment doesn't make any sense. You I, have to I just I, I perhaps Mr. Eubanks said something racially insensitive to Mr. Stewart, and Mr. Stewart took exception to it. I didn't read that's that. What, that's what the uh, Twitter X thing told me. Yeah, so that's an app, not a person, right? So we don't yeah. know where that came well, from off per- of the app. It's Elon Musk. It could have been Elon. Okay, so then it's okay. Now it's political, and now you made it political. Now we've made get, it political. We are not. A, we are apolitical. We're gonna get censored now again. An e is it gonna <laughs> yeah. be an e? Explicit. Man. Okay. Do you have anything? What else do you have to talk I about? I just want to thank the fans. Yeah. Todd Posies, that crossing guard hater in Toronto. PK, we appreciate the support. All the fans, all my guys. Uh, I'm not gonna name everyone. There's so many. No. Hashtag Team Tell Nation. Appreciate you for listening. Uh, I have another off the top. Okay. We didn't talk about this. I did, you don't know I'm bringing this up. No. Granny, yeah. my dog, your mom, yep. is going to London, England next week. Yeah. And found out about it because of an ad in the paper. So here's... so I'm the newspaper, yeah, she sent it to me. This is good. That's awesome. So I went over to... I see Granny all the time. I'm there, I park there for school, so I always pop in, having dinner with Granny. We're talking. And I tell her, look, look Granny, I'm away next week, so I won't be here. And she's like, oh, I'm away too. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Where are you going? Uh, London. I'm like, oh, like what's in London? Like, assuming it's close London, not far London. She says her and her dogs are just hitting up London, England for a week just because they can. Yeah. That's basically what she said. The Hamilton crew, they are good road trippers. Found it in a newspaper, sent it to her buddies, and her buddies were like, let's let's run this up. <laughs> so now she's just going to London, England with her dogs, and she, everything's booked. She's so fired up. I just thought it was awesome. I had to share See, the that. funny thing is, like... Obviously, we do a lot of traveling stuff. Obviously, I got some of that from my dad and from my mom. Yeah. Uh, like my like, dad literally came from another country to here, didn't speak English. That's kind of something. Yeah, that's kind of something. <laughs> um, so, yeah, she was just like, everything's already planned and booked. Travel agent did it. She doesn't know. She's just showing up. And then I told her, like, text me pictures. Keep me in the loop. And she's like, oh, you know, I'm not good with that. And the Wi-Fi she and always, emailing. She, she she just puts it on airplane mode all the time. She gets worries about getting roaming charges. And, and then I've she, explained it to her a lot, but yeah. it's not. So I, then I said, 
hey, Granny, you know, your friends can maybe help you send it. And she said, I'm the best at technology of yes. my friends. So I am worried for their technology well-being. Yeah. Uh, but shout out Granny, the airplane mode, I had to walk her through it. And yeah. when it goes on, right, on the airplane, on, off the airplane, <laughs> off. So that, so we're still working on that. But shout out Granny. Got to say okay. that. Granny, it's a shout out. Okay, so movies. Movies are a big deal. Like, obviously, we talk a lot about sports on this podcast. But movies are something we really like. He likes them more than me. So we had a discussion. It's time about, management. That's all it is. Yes, yeah, time management. Um, <laughs> yes, sure. There's a lot of movies that we love watching. And there's a ton of movies that when they roll up, you're like clicking through and you're like, oh my gosh, that's on. I got to watch it. Now, we're going to discuss a lot of our rewatchable favorites and not the big series, like obviously. Bad Dark Knight Trilogy, awesome. I didn't put Dark Knight Trilogy. Right? No, you can't. Shawshank, everybody knows. That's a good one. What we did is we're just, we picked a bunch of different ones. And I'm going to, at least for a couple of mine, I picked a few of the highlights and favorite scenes from some of my favorite rewatchable movies. And then a couple of them are supposed to be not super popular or common. Was the the, uh, the, gra- the groundwork I was told to set? No? Yeah, I didn't really do that as much, okay. but okay. I, got a, I got a couple that are pretty good. So I have a ton of movies here. You have a ton of movies. So these are favorite movies, rewatchable movies. Basically, the point is if it's on TV or it's on Netflix or you have a small time frame, you're like, oh. I got 20 scene? minutes. I'm going to watch the last 20 minutes of yes. pick something. Okay. So do you want to go? Do you want to go to? How about I'll pick. I'll go through three, you go through three. Yeah, what's your number one? What's your like what you consider your most rewatchable? Ferris. Okay. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Obviously, it's an 80s movie. My age graphic, my age group loves it. I don't know if Isaac's group and the 30 and under appreciate it as much as they should. There's some spectacular scenes in Ferris. Mr. Rooney and then the secretary. Spectacular. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you want to appreciate it. Uh Howard Stein or Ed Stein going Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Cameron issues with his dad. The Sausage King of Chicago. Parade scene. Charlie Sheen cameo. On and on and on. So many good scenes. Love Ferris. That's your biopic. Say, say that. It is pretty much my biopic. Say Ferris. There you go. Okay, so I'll he go with He probably invented one. hashtags. Yep, I'll go with another biopic. Uh, Gladiator. Gladiator is my oh, biopic. Oh, that's a great one. Great one. Love Gladiator. Well, no matter what point... Is on in Gladiator. I'm just there. Well, because you know you're only six or seven minutes away from a spectacular fight scene at any point in the movie. You're the Neanderthal that requires explosions and swords and guns to get through a movie, typically. Um, so, yeah, Gladiator has good fights. But, man, stuff in Gladiator is just so good. Awesome. My, I love Gladiator so much. I talked about it a while ago. Now he rallies Gladiator. the guys. It's just spectacular. Leader of men. That's just Leader my of stuff. men. Yep. That's my Dan Campbell for sure gets fired up watching Gladiator. Okay. Uh, you go again. Sandlot. When's the last time you watched The Sandlot? Not that long ago. Honestly, COVID. I watched it during COVID. Oh, without me. Okay. Yeah. Fair. It's good. The okay. Jet Rodriguez. So good. Okay. I'm not going to go into detail. Princess Bride. Uh, I don't think it's as much credit as it should. Super funny. Do you yeah. like Princess Bride? I do. Yeah. I, like, I wouldn't put it in my top 15 rewatchable movies, but I get it. Like, it's good. I, I did really get like a little it. bit of help on this one just because, uh, again, I was super busy, so I texted a couple of buddies. Uh, so Urban Paul, Timmy G, and Remy gave me some good ideas. Good Morning Vietnam, which I forgot about, and I need to rewatch all that again because I haven't watched that for a long time. So do I. I would rewatch it with you, but you'll just nap and fart uh, some of that simultaneously some of that. the whole time. Yeah. You picked this one for sure. Remember the Titans? Risky Business is one that I hadn't thought about for a long time. That's a good rewatchable. Did you watch that? Like Not a while ago, ago, I don't really remember. Who said Remember the Titans? Because that's a really, really good rewatchable. Uh, I think it was Timmy G. Yeah, Timmy G's my guy. That's good. What yeah. else? Is that all? I got a few more. I, so do why I. Don't you, why don't you list a few now? Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. So good. It's my biopic. That's great. No matter what point is on, I'm just watching Cuckoo's Nest. What? I, I, we, there was a picture on no. the internet No, oh my week. gosh, no. That's all I'm going to say. Stop. <laughs> oh my God. I love One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You should watch it. People don't know how awesome it is because it came out like in 75 or whatever. Just, 70, yeah, 75, I think. Uh, watch Cuckoo's Nest. Another one, I will go with The Incredibles. Love The Incredibles. No matter what point, like I'm, it's super, super watchable. It is good. I do not like the cartoon stuff. Incredibles and Shrek are two of them that I really like. Yeah, I'm a big cartoon guy. Uh, like Monsters, Inc., I find very rewatchable. Cars, I'm Lightning McQueen. Like that's for real me. So I love The Incredibles. Um, and another one, I'll say Get Out. 
I talk about Get Out every like five so episodes. Good. Yeah, I thought about that one as well. It's like top ten favorite movie for me ever at this point. Super, super rewatchable. Especially yep. knowing what's going to just watch Get Out. So those are a few there. You can keep going. Uh, Caddyshack. Again, theoretically, there was a Caddyshack too, but it was so bad and they had none of the same characters. It doesn't even count. So I never saw Caddyshack. You've never seen Caddyshack? Oh, you'll enjoy it. It's never. funny. It, inappropriate, funny. It's good. And obviously I've worked, well, maybe you don't obvious, for a lot of my career I worked at country clubs, so there's some good uh, stuff to laugh about. <laughs> okay. The original Vacation with the original Rusty, National Lampoon's Vacation, that's a rewatch. Well, that's really good. Never got into those. Not, che- not as much as you. You love che- them. Chevy's funny. Yeah. Yep, real funny. Okay, uh, I will go with Moneyball. Oh, another really good Maybe, movie. like, maybe for me the most rewatchable movie ever. And it, it, Because... Like, if you were to describe it for somebody, it's a baseball movie um, and an, about analytics. But it somehow just got to be so good. Like, I've maybe seen that movie, like, in parts 40 times. Because it's on Netflix. It was, at least. And every now and then, it's like, oh, you know what? Over a week span, I'm just going to chip away at Moneyball. Got a PhD in economics from Yale, maybe. Yale or Princeton. or uh, The Town. I'll say the town here. Oh, which car are we going to take? The town, super watchable. Joe Mazzula, Celtics pretty, head coach. Pretty, pretty sure Braden and Blake like that one too. Yeah, yeah. okay, there. Shout out Braden and Blake for the town. That's our biopic. We're in it. <laughs> yeah. uh, love the town. Love It's so <laughs> sick. It's really, really cool. Uh, okay, there's. I, can I do another I, one? For sure. I fully admit that I work in whose car we're going to take way too often. I did it the other day with Chris at work. And I said that, and he didn't know what I was talking about. Yeah, because it's a relatively deep cut. But if you look up whose car are we going to take, like it'll the scene will pop yeah, up. Yeah, and I showed it to him, he's like, that's good. Watch the town, you'll love it. Uh, related to the town, distant relative, Goodwill Hunting. I love Goodwill Hunting. Yep. It's so one good. of my favorites ever. No, I don't have a single, like, this scene I love the most. Um, maybe the park bench scene, that's really good. Park but bench scene is great. Rob Williams' legacy so game. So many good scenes. Okay, I'm going to do another one. Rob yeah. Williams, Dead Poet Society. Yep. Like, I, we're I talking had, about this. Like, I had that one down too. That's so obvious. Oh, Captain, my captain. Like, oh my gosh, it's good. Go rewatch that. And the best scene there is for sure the when he goes back in the class and they stand on the desk. For just, sure it is. Just fires you up. Robin Williams, another legacy game. You keep going. Um, this is one from Mom, Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, you two like it more than me. I find it very entertaining. Could have gone state. Got to, you know, give me your tots. All, those are funny scenes. Uh, but it's a rewatch one. And... Everybody loves it, right? Like, your generation love it. No, because a lot of people haven't seen it. Really? And it's not for everybody. Like, it's so weird. But I really... Napoleon Dynamite, I find hysterical. Okay. Okay, I'll go two movies that came out this year. Oppenheimer. <laughs> yeah. And Air. Yes. So, so Oppenheimer, uh, on paper, is not rewatchable at all, right? Like, it's a three-hour biopic, like... That's like just lots of talking. When you and mom are gone, I need to watch that again one night. I'm just uh, going to put a pizza in and watch that. Oh, yeah. T- yeah. Maybe take a little nap. Uh, not during the movie. Uh, look, Oppenheimer, I think I've seen it enough times to know, like super watchable. Every now and then, a scene will just pop up on Twitter. And just watch Oppenheimer. It's great. Pedro loves it. It's Pedro's biopic. Oh, that would make sense for also sure. Also mine. Uh, Oppenheimer and Air. Air, I will let you talk about. So I watch it. Really enjoyed it. But then I didn't really talk about it didn't think about it for a long time and then i don't know a month ago tell the people what air is because not a lot of people know oh it's the story of basically nike becoming the bomb because of some nerdy basketball dude signing michael jordan to an exclusive contract back in the day it was adidas and converse that had the basketball world uh completely controlled but then this guy kind of said, okay, we're going to put all our money on Michael Jordan. He's going to be a superstar. He's going to be the best. He's going to be an all-time great. Uh, and he did become an all-time great. And he just changed the way athletes are compensated when it comes to apparel. Air. It's on Amazon Prime. So we watched it. He had it on about a month ago. And I, it was only a few minutes in where I sat down and started watching. I'm like, man, this is so good. And you're like, I'm telling you, why you haven't watched it? So I saw that opening night with a bunch of buddies and we're like, uh, is this like one of the best movies we've seen like in the past long time? Yeah. Then I brought a bunch of family members. We all went. We all loved it. Air. So good. On Amazon. Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, uh, Chris Tucker, like really, really good. Uh, yeah, but you've got a couple more, right? I have right? two more 80s movies that I want to mention. Sure. Uh, Breakfast Club and Do the Right Thing. Obviously, Urban Paul is a huge Do the Right Thing fan. Uh, but then I want to talk a little bit about Hoosiers, the movie. Yeah, Hoosiers, the movie. Go ahead. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And 
here's the thing. I love underdog movies, right? That's why we're such big Rocky fans. And Hoosiers is really the ultimate underdog story. This, you know, school of 108 people win the state championship in Indiana. They got Coach Dale showing up and he shows up to basketball practice and the kids are just shooting jumpers. First practice, put the balls away, boys. And they don't understand. And he's just got this revolution aware of way of moving, passing the ball, playing good defense. Spectacular. Then they show up for the state semifinals and finals. I can, maybe it's just the state finals. And there's this huge big dome when they used to play in like church basements. Coach takes out the tape measure, measures the, the height of the rim, and then how long it is for a free throw. So you'll find that's the exact same measurements. And back in our gym, boys, awesome. And then Jimmy Chipwood, who has to be on the Mount Rushmore of fictional athletes. Do you think? No. Like Rocky's up there, Happy Gilmore, Roy Hobbs. There's some good guys. If I thought about it, I would not have Chitwood top four. No. I would probably have Rocky, Apollo, Drago, and Mr. T. And there's my four. You're going to mix in Waterboy. Yeah, Waterboy. <laughs> sure. He can, yeah, he'll be like the fifth. That's actually guy. pretty good rewatchable as well. Yeah. So uh, anyway, these are lots of good movies. You should I'm not done. watch them. Anyway, now it's your time to roll. Fury. Whew. It's good. Go watch Fury. Yeah. War movie. Awesome. More rewatchable than you think for a war movie. War and movies the, typically the aren't. Fury is a little like Avengers. The last scene is long and great. Yeah, I wouldn't compare Fury to Avengers. Why not? The last half an hour, 40 minutes is just like, this is so amazing. <laughs> just because there's lots of explosions. Yes, I like explosions. <laughs> and when good guys win. Do the good guys win in Fury? Yeah. Yep, I they guess. do. They do. Yeah. Um, Men on Fire. Good oh. guys not really winning. You know what? I didn't write that down. but Oh, he won. Yeah, so I watched Man on Fire when he, I was two, he, I think. He, yeah, that, I probably introduced him to that a little bit early. So this is Denzel, a Dakota Fanning. Like Denzel's like a security detective, PI guy, just like awesome, it's super rewatchable on YouTube. I'll spend every now and then. There's a few scenes you go back to when he cuts the guy's fingers off, blows him up in the car. The uh, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do what I do best. I'm gonna kill them all. Like there's yeah. lots of good scenes in Man on Fire. And then Christopher Walken's and he's an artist. He's oh, painting his masterpiece. Christopher Walken's so, so good. So good. Chris Walken's really, really good Man on Fire. Yeah. Uh, so I have two more. La La Land. Thoughts? I'm not sure if I've ever seen it. It's awesome. It's so good. Like, it's really, really good. Am, am I allowed to say, is it a little bit of a chick movie? I don't think it is. Okay. Matt Wismer, favorite movie ever. I'll write it down. And Matt La Wismer, La remember you called him when I was at basketball? Yeah, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. Uh, and then Dirty Harry. Oh yeah, that's good. Seventies just aged aged horribly, incredibly <laughs> so inappropriate. All the ists, like it's just incredibly offensive. Yep. Uh, but it's super awesome. Dirty Air is great. You should watch Dirty Air. Clint Eastwood Legacy. That's my guy. Agreed. Okay. So those are you wanna wrap you wanna wrap it up? Tell the people to watch the movies. Watch the movies. And then comment to us. And if you somehow have some rewatchables that we didn't mention, just fire it to us on Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Again, we didn't do like we go straight away, stayed away from Star Wars and Avengers and Die Hard and Shawshank and the Rockies, right? Yeah, like those we, are the obvious ones. Yeah, right there. Yeah, um, hey, Casablanca. And any Tarantino movie, right? <laughs> like, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So good. Pulp Fiction, right? Okay. Do you want to talk about Super Bowl? Yeah. Okay, I'm talking about Super Bowl. Super Bowl happened. Uh, so first half and the first half of the third quarter were poop. The problem was it was so poop that we're like, man, the lights could have been there. Should have been there. So that was frustrating. I'll, I'll admit that. Manic. I, I, so I just, it brought up some stuff. A couple it, of manics here. It, that's it, all. It brought Nothing up some, to see. It brought Nothing up some to see stuff. here. Just a couple manics. Okay. So a little deja vu action. Mahomes is awesome. Three rings, five years. So here's the deal. Mahomes is better than Purdy, which we predicted. Reed's better than Shanahan. Sorry. Yeah, Reed's better than Shanahan. We predicted that as well. We didn't realize how big a difference that would play in the outcome of the game. But... Basically, San Fran, who has a great defense, they've got good people at all three levels, couldn't stop Mahomes in the fourth quarter in overtime. Purdy made some mistakes, and he's just not the guy who you're going to win a Super Bowl with. He played better than I thought. Mm. He did play better than I thought, but he's not a top 10 quarterback in the league. No, I'm I'm probably more pro Purdy. Yeah. Uh, but just, I, there's 10 quarterbacks you'd take ahead of him, right? Yeah, yeah, I would have to. Well, yeah, like, look, if you put Goff in Purdy's place, I think, I think, and I'm not a massive Goff guy, I think Goff does better than Purdy. Agreed. Yeah. 
Um, but when you get Herbert and Burrow and Jackson and lots of guys, then there's lots of quarterbacks. There's that. There's like there's the quarterbacks right now in the NFL. Like there's like super top heavy. I would say like yeah. you've got you know maybe seven or eight guys that are awesome. Six guys awesome. Stafford better than Purdy. Ooh, the corpse of Matt Stafford. Yep, he's a convict. I don't like him anymore. I'm he, not talking about. He was that. good this year. He was great against the Lions. Yeah, you know what? And he still went home with an L. And we were there. So there you go. Sorry, Kelly. Uh, No, I'm not sorry, Kelly. I'll boo your kids. Sorry. I mean, I won't. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. I won't boo any children. No, no. No booing children. Okay. uh, So we talked about Mahomes. He's the man. I'm more pro Purdy than most. Uh, Let's talk about the overtime thing. Right? So It, It needs to be discussed. Initially, when I first heard the rumor on, I don't know, probably Monday, I thought, okay, this is just chatter because there's nothing else to talk about. But then there's just too much information has to come out. And did you see some of the clips where players were talking about it? I did not see those. I Ooh. saw some clips. I didn't see stuff like just that. Just like Mahomes came back to something. They want the ball. They want the ball. They want the ball. And then uh, they were all like super excited about it. And it was obvious that San Francisco wanted the ball to start. And th- their line was, we want a third. If you're playing Patty Mahomes... You, don't no, call him Patty. That's there's no true. third. Well, okay. There's a the thing. So there isn't a third. So people are saying like, oh, obviously, and like when coach, it's tough to criticize coaches on your couch because they're smarter Correct. than us. Yes, they are. But and people are saying like, oh, you would have picked, and it's like you know, like it happened, and it, I didn't really realize it, and then like couple, like some seconds go by, and then it's like, wait, sorry, the Niners got the ball, but with the new rules, that means the Chiefs have it second, like they're batting last. And then we're like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And then quickly, it was like, oh, so the Niners are going to get three, and then the Chiefs are just going to go on and get seven or six, and that's going to be how the game goes. Well, because so, we were adding that up, because it was, that's how we, that's not how just we, but a whole lot of people started to do the math. Okay, San Francisco gets three, KC gets six, under. Yeah. Because the, the over-under line was 47 and a half. And the way it played out, it was 46 points. Or 47 points, sorry. So Shanahan, you're right, wanted the third drive, which is theoretical. It's a theoretical third drive. It's nothing. It's fairy dust. Poof. Like, it's not real. The first two drives, that's what what football is. You take the ball second, you have the second drive. Like, it makes sense. Um, Look, so we talk about how the Eagles have first and nine because they get a yard on tush push. Yep. So no matter what, they can just tush push. So it's really nine yards to get a first down. Chiefs had first and 10, but four plays to get 10 yards every single time. Exactly. That's one of the other analysis things, right? When you know that you have to score to win, you can do different things on third and six. You You can can do different things on third and six, and you can go for it on fourth and one on your own 34, like the Chiefs did in overtime, right? If they had the ball first and that situation presented themselves, they They, punt. They get a punt. They have to, right? Yeah, because you missed it. You're in field goal range. So I would, I just, like I... The Shanahan wanted the the third drive thing. I I get the the theory behind it. It just doesn't make sense. Then you factor in that Mahomes is on the other side, and and going down the field, that's the last guy you'd want to face in football, right? And so. as the as the week has unfolded, we're recording Thursday night. San Francisco lo- looks worse and worse. Their coaching staff, the organization, they decided to dump their uh, defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes, who had a good game, and I'm pretty sure he's not the one who said. We want a third. Like he was in the running for some head coaching positions, but they obviously needed some type of a scapegoat. So they fired their defensive coordinator, Wilts. Yeah. And he looks look, poor. Yeah. Like when you talk about uh, the defense, the stats on the backup linebacker, whose name I don't have in front of me, who went in for Greenlaw, yeah. which is just an awful injury. Just sucks. The way Greenlaw got Terrible for San Fran because he sucks. Listen, Greenlaw and uh, Warner, they covered the entire field. And they hit like bulldozers. Tire middle of the field is just, and they do the same. They can just kind of mirror each other on both sides. Yep. They can run similar like defensive actions that I don't understand. They can rush the quarterback. They're really good at defending in space, and they close. And again, they hit like bulldozers. So they tried to kind of the, the why the reason why it gets kind of convoluted here is because the backup that went in for Greenlaw is a different type of player than Greenlaw and Warner. So they tried to do the same scheme but you can't do it because you have this guy who can't do what warner can do on the other side of the field that makes sense right so uh they just picked on him the chiefs really just picked up this backup the whole second half Uh, that helped kelsey get open a lot more yeah kelsey i think he had one catch for one yard are we going to talk about the roid rage thing or no uh why don't you mention it yeah 
Roy Rage. Kelsey was pushing my guy Andy Reid, like a war, like the war criminal that Kelsey is. Um, that's elder abuse for one. So <laughs> elder abuse. That's a that's a crime. Fat guy abuse. No, that's not a thing, dude. It, okay. Um, walrus. Walrus no. abuse. No, for sure. Okay. The god Kelsey going in the second half. I. It, the him screaming was goofy. I didn't really like that. Obviously, I'm not a Kelsey guy at this point. Uh, do you know how many Super Bowls have went to overtime? Three. Two. Oh, okay. And what was the other one? 28-3. Yeah, which was 2016. Shanahan's been on losing end of both. Ooh, sorry brutal. about your luck. So there's your Shanahan bit. Sorry about your luck. What else do you have about Subi? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with San Francisco because obviously they have tons of talent. They have the most stars on their team in the league. You know, Philadelphia theoretically did, but they all don't seem to like each other. So I think San Francisco has the most stars at a lot of different positions. But are they going to sign Brandon Ayuk? Trent Williams, stop saying he's the best He actually did lineman. not have a good game. No, he did not. Stop saying he's the best lineman in football because Penny Sewell is the best lineman in football. So he's aging. It's just going to be interesting to see what happens, right? If Ayuk towards ACL, what's going to... Not, sorry, not Ayuk. Uh, Greenlaw. Greenlaw. Uh, you know, what happens there... It's tough to stay on top. It's tough to stay up there. And San Francisco has really, with that core, has been there for five years. Yeah, they're an Asian core. They've had, like, this They've is their mixed window. in some new guys. Obviously, they, like McCaffrey's new and, and Purdy's Purdy, new. I would say, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, bigger picture. Yeah, the Niners' window is theoretically closing. Guys are getting older. Debo's getting older. But Kittle's and, not as and, old as you think, but he's right, getting older. And the NFC is more wide open than the AFC, obviously. Yeah, uh, we'll do, like, a Lions deep dive uh, later. Oh, we're, we're going to do a couple of those for sure. Okay, we're going to do a couple of them. What else do you have on the soupy? What do you think about Usher? He's good. He's that's like. Did you watch Usher? I did. Okay, okay, because I didn't. I, I did. Why. Well, the funny thing is, like, you asked me three days before, and I, and I didn't know who the halftime performer is because I don't care unless you're bringing Prince back from the dead. It just it doesn't mean that. No, Prince was one of the best super. Yeah, but you can't like the corpse of Prince isn't gonna like the corpse of Prince gonna... is probably still better than a lot of the uh, halftime shows that they've had. That's pretty good. It's a good take. Uh, but Usher was really good, and then mixing in. Uh, Alicia Keys, that was pretty cool. Oh, the rumors oh. about Bieber coming on. I How do you know this us. stuff? I barely know it. Like, I read a headline and kept going. Like, I, I didn't I, stop. A couple of the girls that worked told me. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> uh, I had a huge exam on the Monday. First of all, it's, I'm not going to say a war crime. It is unethical to schedule an exam the, the Monday after the Super Bowl. It's unethical. Right? So, yeah. uh, I during halftime, I left the room and was studying my notes. And kind of heard the cheering and the hollering. Came back when the game started. Uh, yep. I didn't miss a play, though, which is good. Um, so I didn't watch the Usher thing. Commercials. Thoughts on the commercials? The Duncan Kings was awesome. That was oh, really you watched funny. some of the commercials? I did watch some of the commercials. Uh, I, I'm not sure what else jumps out at me other than the anti-Semitic commercial, which was a deep, the really West well one? done. No. They, Robert Kraft paid for it. Just this mom and her daughter go out. If you haven't seen it, just Google it. Super Bowl anti-Semitic commercial. Yeah. It was awesome. Just a good good neighbor. Good I don't neighbor. remember Mr. Yeah. Crowley or something. Kanye West had a good commercial. Guy. I don't care about Kanye West. He's an anti-Semitic ass. <laughs> oh, now we're explicit. Yeah, we, now, we are explicit. Now we're going to get censored. Kanye's he's really, he's got to be one of the worst celebrities on the planet. There's he's worse alluded. people than him. Yeah, but why are people so into him? Like, his album sucked. Much... Dropped new album, didn't it suck? I, I don't know, no, but I'm sure say, it sucked. You see, you listened, right? I, no, I, no, yeah, I listened. It sucked. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, it's just a terrible album. Hated it, and he's a bad guy too. Um, the only thing I care about commercial wise, because people do care about the commercials. Yeah, obviously. yeah. Obviously, uh, they just do like thirty seconds and watch the trailer online. So like they'll do a thirty second thing at Deadpool and say watch the trailer online. They okay. did that with Planet of the Apes. They did that with some cool movies. Deadpool coming out, firing me up. Just, I did see the Deadpool one. That's fine. It's going to be great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as far as the game, we talked a lot about the game. Underwhelming. Got good. Uh, we bet on the Chiefs when they had the ball with a minute 57 left, down three. We're like, oh, so Mahomes has the ball and he's going to go to score seven. He did score three, but they won in overtime. So the bet hit. We're all good. It's a good bet. So bet on, bet on the Chiefs. Don't bet against Mahomes. Um, some prop stuff hit. Um, but yeah, that's what I got on Super Bowl. It cool. was. It could have sucked. It got better. All right, let's roll through some NBA stuff. Trade deadline, again, three days before, it looked like it was just going to be poop and nothing was going to happen, but a fair amount of stuff happened. Let's just talk about the Pistons for a minute, and then we'll talk about like some real teams that made real moves. Yeah, you can talk about the Pistons. Um, so they're better. Why have the Pistons been better in the last three weeks? Because they dumped Killian and Livers. 
dumping Boyan and Burks doesn't really make them better. That's kind of a mix of guys. Uh, Simone uh, Fontecchio, what's his name? Fontecchio. Fontecchio. Just call him Tech. Quentin Grimes, those are pretty decent pickups. But here it shows that Asur, Doran, Cade, Ivy, those guys need to cook. Last couple of games, you've been poop. Be better. Uh, Ivy's isolation stats are actually pretty decent. Did I send those to you or did you find them? Uh, you think you told me about it, then I looked them up. Good. Um, anyway, Pistons, just be a little better. Please get better. Cade, I need you to show you're the man because we know you're the man. Show the world because there's just people talking some crap about you. Step up and be the man on defense and on offense and energy level. Prove them wrong, too. You're the yeah. man. We know you're the man. Yes. It's fair. Simple as that. Same with Durin. Same with Ivy. Um, Asara, I'm rooting for you because you're wearing Asara's starting to get some more playing, playing time. And listen, he's learned how to shoot and he's going to be just okay. one of the. Shooting 14% from three. You could shoot what? better, actually. It's true. Right? You shoot 16%. That's. Yeah. Right? But Maybe everybody 16. would hear about it when I hit one. Yeah. Um, we're not going to talk about your performance last Monday night at basketball. No, it wasn't very good. The just, week before was pretty good. Last week was not good. Yeah, he's a little up and down basketball. I always get him. I'm going to get him looks. I'm going to keep getting him looks. Listen, but. my effort was there. My legs are starting to get better. My upper body, my shoulders, my wrist, not good. Hit the gym with me and Dante. He's teaching. He's, I, I, he's, I'm uh, getting better, but I just have these injuries. The lower body stuff he'll help you with. He'll make My lower body stuff is better. I was moving. You well collapsed on at one point during our game. You I collapsed. Did, I did collapse once. Yeah. Collapse. I told him get off the court. He said, "No, I'm fine. I'm fine." Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the Pistons you talked about, they just make me kind of emotional. I don't really want to get into it. Um, You'll be okay. Yeah. It's yeah. tough, man. <laughs> Let's talk about some real teams at the trade deadline. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I have three teams that I've highlighted, and then I have a player that I've highlighted. Go nuts. What would you like to hear about first? The three teams. What team? What you don't know the team. You, uh, you don't know the team. Who did you highlight? OKC? I did highlight OKC. The Knicks? I didn't highlight the Knicks, but you did, I think. And the Celtics. I'm not highlighting those convicts. Uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers. So talk about Cleveland. I understand that people don't care about Cleveland. They've won 17 of 19 games. Oh, they've been good. d Mitch, MVP race. That's very real. Uh, leads the NBA in plus minus. I'm not a huge plus minus guy, but leading the NBA in it, I'll care a bit. Um... Jared Allen, who last year kind of looked like, is he going to be on this team long-term, has been awesome, like all-star good. I don't understand because, like, it's, he, like his skill level is mostly within five feet of the basket. Developed, developed. developed. He's shooting a little bit short more. Pick seven, and, yeah. Short pick and roll. He can facilitate a bit. They're great using defender. Thing. Great, yeah, great elite finisher, defender. obviously. Um, the Cavs are worth all the love here. They've got tough matchups in the East, right? Like, if they yep, they if they, if they play the Knicks, like, that's we saw that the Knicks expose them last year. Um, the whole thing is they want us to get faster, better shooting, and more unpredictable because they were very, very slow and predictable last year, especially in the half court. And that's what happens when you're going to play two bigs that can't shoot, right? Yep. I get that. Um, but they're changing things up a bit. They've got this Sam Merrill guy who's shooting like 50% from three. Looks like me. Yes. Um, not actually, but you, you get the Close bit. enough. Um, the Cavs, I really enjoy watching Cleveland. I really like a lot of their guys. They're a good team. They're Mario well says you'd be better on the Pistons than Killian. Do we want to talk about Killian or no? He, they cut what, him. What is, is he working at Baskin Robbins now? That's incredibly disrespectful. He's probably in Beijing playing basketball, right? Like the the Shanghai Sharks were looking for guys, right? It's okay. simple as that. Uh, that's what I got on Cleveland. Rick. Do you have anything to say about the Cleveland Cavaliers? No, nope. you haven't watched them at all this year. Not right? a lot. Okay, it's right in the playoffs. You should. I will. Uh, they're going to maybe get first rounded though. Eastern Conference, so I can see the games. Okay, uh, let's talk about Western Conference team that you haven't watched this year. Minnesota Timberwolves. What have you read about the Timberwolves? Um... I've read that Ant is the man. For some reason, Gobert, who we really don't like, has actually picked it up and has been really good defensively. Cat, even though he goes through some stages where he decides to just play like Zorro defense and not guard anybody, he's been pretty decent this year. Um, they're good. Like They have the second best record in the West, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about who's kind of atop the West these days. Um, Monty Morris. They got Monty Morris at the deadline. Um, who like was good with Detroit was like very limited. He didn't jump out of the screen, but he was fine. Yeah, uh, fits Minnesota well. Minnesota's thing is they they he's a good backup guard. They beat good teams. Minnesota beats good teams. Yep. Um, Anthony Edwards. So he got an All Star nod because someone's hurt. Yeah. Did you hear what he said? No. Don't come in All Star. It doesn't count. I'm just replacing an injured guy. Ooh, love it. That's I just I, I love that because you've got guys like Scotty Barnes and Toronto doing a parade for making the All Star team. Um. And then you've got guys like Ant Man, who's just like I. I don't care. It doesn't. It, it's not, I'm not an all star. I didn't get in for real. Yep. Um, sorry to throw shade there at Toronto, but it's true. 
Um, Minnesota, lots of length. They usually play two big guys at all times. Yep. Uh, even when they cycle Who's through. Who's your backup big? Nas Reed. Nas Reed, who you love. Who I'm going to get a jersey, a Nas yeah. Reed jersey. He's I awesome. love Nas Reed. Um, they're so good defensively. They're so big. They're so lanky. And then here's a, did you read about their big win versus the Clippers? No. So they beat the Clippers. It's tough yep. to beat the Clippers these days. I'm sure you have a bit on them. Uh, how did it, the Clippers embarrass the Jazz and make that franchise implode in 21, I think it was. Do you remember what they did? They went five out, super small. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rudy uh, Gobert had to guard yeah, Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann. And, and this made the Jazz blow up. Yep. So the Clippers and Timberwolves were playing. What do you think the Clippers did? Probably put, uh, like, Kawhi at the five. They went super small. Zubox had come back from injury. Yeah, they so benched Kawhi, him. George, Harden... We, yeah, man was getting a lot man. of run. They've got Amir Coffee. Like they've got some guys. Westbrook will jump in. Yeah. Um, it did not work. The Timberwolves rolled out. They left Gobert and Towns out there, hmm. and they just wrecked them on the offensive end. Cat every miss. Any time he got someone who wasn't like six eleven on him, he just body them and get a bucket down low or get That's a good what you look. Should do. And Gobert got every offensive rebound. So they beat the small ball. This is a big deal. This is a huge, huge deal. It is a big deal. Because if the Timberwolves are going to lose, it's going to be because of that. It's going to be because of the small ball, Gobert getting exposed. Well, because eventually the Pistons are going to be good, and they need Duran to be able to beat on that stuff. Yeah, I'm not worried about Duran at all. I, I am still. Uh, not at all. I think Oh, Durant's, he's going to be good. He's starting Durant's to take them so off the dribble now. Uh, so that's why I talk about Minnesota. I really enjoy watching Minnesota. Um, I think we need to talk about OKC and Shea and picking up Gordon Hayward a little bit. That's the last team I highlighted. Yeah, so go I, ahead. You want me to go? Yeah, you go. Okay, deadline, they got Gordon Hayward. Did you hear about the big they got? Because I didn't. It was after the deadline, they picked him up off his couch. No. Bismack Biombo. Oh, Bismack, he's good for a playoff series. Fine body, just a, a big dude who can just hit guys down low and grab and some OKC boards. And OKC needed that. And Biombo's actually been okay. He yep. was on Memphis earlier this year, and he was fine. Um, they just don't really have a Memphis spot for Memphis is G League? They're just playing all young guys, yeah. 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 Um, Shea, so some Shea stuff here. So obviously, like MVP. So straw poll. Now he's kind of like second in the MVP discussion because Embiid is now off the island because he's injured. So listen, if Jokic doesn't pick it up, Shea's going to win the MVP, which I like. I'd I mean, I, Jokic is the best player on the planet. Yep. But I love Shea and the attention that he's getting because he's awesome. He doesn't like have all the superstar highlights. He just freaking scores. Yeah. Uh, do you want to guess how many drives he has this year? Because I have the number. It's from a couple days ago. Do you want to try? Like, it's incredibly difficult to guess. You don't yeah. know it. This isn't a bit. This is authentic. No. So they played 50 games-ish? Yeah. yeah, about there. 572. Ooh, okay. Uh, if I knew how to edit, I would cut that out. Uh, 1265. Whoa! So you think that's a lot. The guy that's second... Has 971. Okay. So look at the disparity. That's a lot. Shea who's, drives all the who's time. second? Do you want to guess? Drives, not post-ups. So it's a guard who drives a lot. It is a guard, not a forward. Guard who drives a lot. Top 20 player in the NBA. This year has been big for him. Brunson. Brunson. Great. Yeah. There. I gave you a couple of lobs. You got it. Brunson second in the league drives. Shea's first. Uh, and the Thunder, as a team, are first in drives because Shea drives 40 times a game. Yep. Um, J- J-Dub. Jalen Williams. He's going to be an all-star. Yeah, he's a great player. He's going to be an all-star. He's just an elite player. He's fun player. to watch too, eh? Love him. Uh, advanced stats through the roof. I test everything. I think he's great. And then Chet. Chet's a great fit. Chet's been really good. And they've been um, good since they've just gone to him as the five and just kind of roll around him. They're not a great rebounding team. They're not a great re- Sometimes, But the, that's okay. They do a lot of good stuff. Sometimes they get scared with Chet at the five, to be honest. Like just, here's the thing. Gordon Hayward, he's a pretty good pickup because I think Giddy, like if he's shooting okay, he can play, but... I think Hayward's probably a guy you close with. That's a great take. Uh, yeah, that's why Hayward is there. Hayward would be stealing these closing giddy Dort minutes down the stretch, right? Depending on defensively and stuff, um, right? Because Lou Dort's a six four center essentially. Dort's your chamber. Uh, so that's what I got on the Thunder. Love watch. I've I've been on the Thunder for like a couple years, like us, like a while ago. I was like, they're gonna win multiple championships. I stand by that. Might not be this year, but they're gonna win. They're gonna win rings. Agreed. That's what I got. Okay, what else? Uh, just a couple of things. Teams that I think should have done a little bit more. Bulls traded away nobody. You're awful. Portland, you need to trade away some guys because you need to have Sharp, Simmons, and Scoot with touches. Spurs, listen, I know Wemby has been better lately, and part of it is because he's playing with Jones in real guard. To me, if I'm the Spurs, I pick up another guard who can help develop and work things for Wemby because he's a freak show. Okay, I am. You got some Wemby stuff. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm the Spurs GM. 
I'm calling you. You're the Atlanta GM. Hey, uh, can I? Can I have... Trey Young thoughts? No, no Trey Young. You don't want Trey Young San Antonio? No. There's I a take lot of Murray buzz. back on a discount. There's a lot of Trey Young San Antonio buzz. Just going to plant that seed. Now. I just don't think uh, Trey is a winner, and I don't want him on my team taking away too many touches from Wemby. I'm not worried about the touches part. Like a Conley type guy. Not that Minnesota is going to give up Conley, but like a professional point guard. Professional point guard. Fair. The Trey Young thing is real. That's just going to be a thing in the offseason. <laughs> You're just going to be prepared. I'm going to um, be mad on that. Okay, Victor Wembanyama. First, I will let you tell your perspective of my experience with him. Basically, how many times a day do I text you something of Victor? 11. It's 11 a day? Probably. I'll take the under. It's probably 8. Well, okay, 11, but... Also, when we're in the house together, you're like, he's just ripping up the Raptors. He's playing with them. Okay. So, I've been on Victor. I Like, admittedly, like, it's not cool. Like, I get it. Uh, I just, like, it's just hard not, as a basketball fan, not to fall in love with him. As a dude, as a guy, as a player, everything. Um, 27, 14, 10, 5 against Toronto on Monday. <laughs> it's awesome. With blocks. He had 10 blocks, right? Yeah. So, you talk about, you're someone who would love the next quadruple double. It'll be Victor getting it. I thought for sure, for, for a sure. few years ago, people thought Davis, because Davis got a triple-double with blocks before. Yep. Uh, but he's just not the assist guy, especially next to LeBron. Yeah. Um, he's going to get a quadruple-double. Victor is. Agreed. Watch. I want, I want San Antonio to be a little bit better, a little bit more competitive, because my worry is that Chet is getting a little bit of love because of how good OKC is. And listen, I think Chet is really good. He can't hold Wemby's uh, lunch. Correct, he can't. Um, I, guys, just open a new tab and look up Victor Wembanyama versus Toronto Raptors. It was the best game I've seen from yeah. him. Sorry, Urban and Toronto people, but man, he destroyed The you. second best game he had was against the Pistons. He dropped a triple-double in about 14 minutes. Yeah. Like, seriously. Those are his two best games. If you want to watch every single night, he does something new, usually multiple times a night. And I and I watch him... Like blocking the alley-oop? Was it just last night? It's unbelievable. That was what he, awesome. I've got some nerds. You texted me about it. About him. It's, it's Just hard. give two good nerd stuff. Then we got to go. Okay, we do. But Victor Wembanyama is going to be a top 10 player in the NBA history. Okay? He is so good. The championships, I, 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 they'll have to come. He'll win a couple. He's just too good not to. Yeah. He's too big of an asset to not prioritize. Obviously, he needs to have an all-star guard with him. I understand him being radical. Just You guys got to watch Wemby. Hard to describe the impact he has on defense on a night-to-night basis. Yep. It's unbelievable. He takes up half, half the floor. Half the court? Half the floor. Teams are just stay away from. Um... Pick and roll ball handler and the pick and roll roller, he guards both. The only guy that has, <laughs> we've seen do that in the past few years is Giannis. Yeah. Wemby can do it and just as good. And he's strong. Wemby doesn't look super strong. He's got super strong, big hands. He and can block he anything. is going to get stronger. Offensively, he's a genius. On ball, off ball, cutting, um, perfect balance, body control. And that's footwork. with me throwing him lob passes. Unbelievable. He's super stylish and has awesome flair. Like the no look passes and the spin he'll put on passes. He knows, like, anything he does is under a microscope. Yep. He knows that. Uh, but he's been prepping for this for years. Oh, man. He was designed to play ball. His family and the French coach, they've been prepping him for years. His left hand. How is, to handle the media, all that stuff. His left hand Warm is so ups. good. His yep. left hand is so good. The length is there. Self-creation is nuts. Step back, Luca threes he's doing now. Unprecedented. That's the word. It's unprecedented. Okay, we get a scat. Okay, I just, Victor Wembanyama. That's all I got. Okay, thanks, fans. We'll talk to you soon.